Cue the music. All right. As you can kind of see what we got, we have something that's unique. Yes, that's how you say it, I guess. Unique. I just thought it was Yannick or something like that, but I guess that'd be more Russian than Chinese, right? So, anyways, we have this in the house today. What is it? Well, it's very unique. So, tell you what, this isn't going to work really getting it out of the box because this box is freaking huge. So, I'll tell you what, you kind of know what's here. I'm going to go get it out, and I'll be back in a second, and we'll take a look. And we're going to talk about why did I buy this. That's what we're going to do in this episode. Why did I buy something that's unique? So let's get to it. Okay, well, we're sort of back. And what do we have? We have the unique Typhoon H. And I tell you what, I'm blaming this one on Robert. This is all going on RJ Make. So just like that kid off, what what is it, Better Off Dead, the John Cusick movie, I want my two bucks, I want my two bucks. Two dollars. <laughs> He's always on me. Give 4K, go 4K, shoot 4K. Well, guess what, folks? This is 4K. How do you like that now, RJ Make? So there you go. We got fully retractable legs like the Aspire. It's not the Aspire, but it's got fully retractable legs like that. 360-degree rotatable 4K camera with one of the most badass remote controls over here. You can get on the market. It doesn't get any cooler than this. So, now I got to take it out of the box. Folks, we have to have a moment of silence at this point. I tell you what, I feel so grown up. I don't know how else to put it. Look at this thing. This thing is amazing looking. Kind of reminds me of the aliens off of uh, Arrival or something. They kind of look like trees. And you look at this guy. And we take these props out. I don't know what's in here. That's interesting. It's kind of heavy. Um, but look at this thing. This thing, if this isn't alien looking, I don't know what is. Look at this thing. It is awesome. Sorry for bumping you, but I can't help it. I, let's go ahead and kind of move things around. It's got a great foam case. Now, I brought another case. I'm going to do a review on that in a bit. But look at this bad boy. Let me turn it up so you can see this thing. Very light. Everybody said it was light for its size, and they are right. I'm just holding it with my two fingers. Very easy. Very lightweight. And yes, Robert... 4K camera, four, count them, four, four, no, that's six, the two, yeah, 4K camera right there. So, tell you guys what, I was out flying the Solo the other day, and as I was finishing up, guy walks up, says, oh, you're a drone pilot. I said, yeah, I got a few drones. He goes, you got an Aspire. I go, nah, I don't got an Aspire. He goes, I got an Aspire, would you like to see it? Sure. So we took his Aspire out, flew his Aspire, and I'm like, this thing is cool. Now, Robert's been on me about, hey, you gotta buy an Aspire. Yeah, I'm not ready to quite drop that kind of coin, but I tell you what, I was okay with dropping the coin on this because this is a pretty interesting looking bird, um, if you will. So I'm pretty geeked about it, adding this to the collection. Now, the other thing is, is and I may bounce you a little bit here can I pull up these things you'll notice something about this well maybe you will if I put it in here it's got six motors it's a hexacopter and this is one of the things that I liked about it is I've really been looking at going to the the hexa or octocopter route because if one of these motors fails this thing can still fly the likelihood of a motor probably failing is low what is more likely to fail is an ESC. And I really like the idea of the fact that this thing can still fly with a major failure. And this is one of the reasons I've been also looking at octocopters, because you can actually lose two motors, well, two, two motors, and it can still fly. So I like the resiliency built into the system. Also, I did a lot of binge watching on YouTube also, and one of the things that it appears is a lot of the firmware issues 
uh, unique has worked out. And so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Now, I got this for a pretty good price off of Amazon, and that was the other thing. This is a refurbished unit. I picked it up for around, eight, you know, it was like $7.99 or something. So let's just say $800. Bucks. So really, this isn't much more than what I have in the Spark. And I really like the idea of the retractable landing legs. <clears throat> I like the idea of the 4K camera. I like the fact that this thing, this camera, spins around at 360 degrees while the copter stands still. I really, really like that because I think if you're going to shoot anything sort of cinematically, this is a great feature to have. And this is not something you can do with the Phantom, is be able to spin that around. Now, let's take and set this aside for a moment and get to the other piece that really kind of sold me on it's this guy what is it the ST16 controller look at this folks look at this controller this is a grown-ups controller I mean it's got the built-in screen now I really like this uh, for a couple different reasons I, I one of the biggest gripes and it's gotten better with the spark but I think it's still kinda terrible with the um, the Phantom 3 is the binding of an external device to that in the performance of that external device with said controller this is all integrated this is all grab and go technology the other piece is and I'm very much into cameras and I've started a camera channel too is I like to have all the controls or as many controls as possible at my fingertips this gives it to me look at the switch configurations on this video, picture, my controllers, my flight sequences, my landing gear, uh, return home, uh, just all right there and switch controls. Uh, the other thing is, is I can control the speed of the copter right here with this. So how fast does it perform? I can turn it down so it's like a turtle and performs like the spark or I can make it an FPV racer all from this dynamically so as I'm flying it I can control the speed and I think that's fantastic and then all the built-in programmable controls of this are just I think crazy so and this is an Android tablet now the other thing is is um, Captain Drone uh, seems to be real big on the um, unique Typhoon H so I, I did a lot of binge watching of his videos after purchasing it and one of the cool pieces is this up here this HDMI out now his understanding and he said there's been some firmware upgrades since he's actually used it but you can get both telemetry and straight video out of this port so because one of the things I want to do is be able to still capture the telemetry now this is an Android tablet and you can sideload onto this Android tablet, but I really don't want to mess with it. I don't want to put something like DU Screen Recorder on here and mess with it. I kind of want to leave the integrity of it the way it is. Um, because if there are upgrades, I don't want to interfere with that upgrade path and, and mess it up. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to be a future video, is I'm going to build a small... HDMI recorder that plugs in here and then what I'll do is I'll just velcro it to the back here and um, You know video all this stuff through here So I think that'll be really cool feature to have the other piece is is I can also run HDMI out to a set of goggles with this bad boy So again very grown up and there's a lot of antenna uh, You know options out there for this uh, However, this is rated at a mile range, so I, you know, I think, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, there's line of sight, there's following the rules, and then there's following the rules, and then there's just really breaking the rules. So uh, I'm thinking, you know, if there's truly a mile with the stock antennas, that's more than plenty. So I'm not going to really worry about antenna mods in this guy unless there's a problem now I noticed in some of the earlier ones uh, there did seem to be range issues but it does seem that if you move forward in the video sequence which is one of the great things about YouTube it's sort of like this 
you know, history or, you know, uh, time tunnel thing. You go back in, you kind of look at the history, then you can watch him, you know, as, as, as viewers do firmware upgrades and you can see all the good stuff. So, um, I think that's one of the exciting things about this is this is now kind of caught up with the times, if you will. Uh, and, and so, again, I'm really excited. So this is why I bought it. Um, a number one reason, RJ Make was always picking on me. Got to get 4K. So 4K ticked in the box. I saw that Aspire. That was a sweet bird. Was a sweet bird. It's only got four props. Four props. I got six props. He's got a better camera. I tell you, I was impressed. This guy had really the camera set up on the Aspire. And with changeable lenses, again, you know, the one that comes on this one. Well, let's go back and take a quick look at it. Now, this one is nowhere near as sophisticated as the uh, one on the Aspire. Uh, but it still is a pretty large and actually fairly impressive camera. I mean, you can kind of see the size next to my hand. This is not a tiny camera like you see on the, the Phantoms, etc. So, uh, and you can kind of see in here, it's really packed with the electronics and it does not feel too lightweight. Now, one of the nice things, and I might bump you guys, and I hope I don't break this taking this off, but the other piece I like about this is it's totally removable. Just, as you just saw, I just slid it off. So, and this spins in 360 degrees like this. This is, you know, really blew me away that that worked like that. And again, that it could slip on and off like this to take other cameras. So, um, you know, I think this is a very interesting platform. And we'll definitely take a look at, you know, doing some mods and what other cameras we can put on here. And uh, I've seen some FLIR cameras for this. I'm going to do some FLIR stuff on the Solo. So, anyways, um, I'm impressed with the whole camera assembly and setup. Now, I've seen, and I, I'm hoping they still make them, but aftermarket... Um, uh, filters for this that you could put on here because again you guys know I fly over the water a lot and I really like the uh, circular polarizing filters so I definitely want to get th those for this and it will be uh, some of the first things on the list so anyways um, you know everybody knocks it if I spin this around everybody knocks it because it doesn't have a smart battery and yeah, that can be a little bit of a downfall in, in battery life and everything but I sort of like that because I've also seen a number of mods where people have modded it. I'm just kind of looking in there to see how the configuration works in the batteries. Um, to take regular LiPos. And I kind of like that as a potential option. Now the other thing is, because it doesn't have a smart battery, there's a lot of third parties out there. And matter of fact, I have purchased a third party battery to go with this. Actually a larger third party battery. Um, you know, for extended flight times with this at a cheaper price. So this is one of the things I like and is it's more open. Now this does have some geofencing and some overlordness like the DJI has. Uh, however, I don't think it's as bad. I don't know. I just got it. But again, watching the YouTube videos and from what I've seen, I, I don't think it's as crazy because, you know, one of the big problems is, you know, it's still... The whole geofencing thing, I think it's good. This is limited to 400 feet, which I'm totally okay with. Because um, I don't think you need to fly over 400 feet. And if you do, you know, yeah, there, there's something up. You know, and again, yeah, I mean, I think there's cases where you want to fly buildings and things like that. Or you need to commercially. And I'm sure that there's an unlocking procedure for this. But in general, you know, for what I'm going to do, 400 feet is not a problem. Um, so I, I'm okay with that. Uh, but sometimes the geofencing, for example, right now, hover has sort of gone really wanky on me, um, putting all these circles over top of where I fly that, you know, clearly I've checked the NOTAM list, I've checked everything, there's no reason for those circles to be there. I even called the local airport and said, hey, what's up? You know, did you guys issue some NOTAMs? And I talked to the airport director and they said, no, we didn't do anything. So... Again, this whole micromanagement thing, I think, still has a lot to be worked out. So I don't want to be told I can't fly because of some micromanagement. So I'm hoping that's not the case here. You know, I can understand in the macro case how it works. But anyways, I don't want to get off too far on that tangent. Anyways, this is it. This is why I think I've rambled enough of why I bought the unique... Uh, Typhoon H. I'm really looking forward to getting this thing up in the air, flying it, testing it out. Um, so look for some videos very soon on that. Tell you what, 
Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to have for lunch because I'm probably too excited to eat lunch because I just got this guy. So anyways, give it a thumbs up. If you got a Typhoon H, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you think um, about your Typhoon H. Give me some pointers if you have them and tell you what. Hit that subscribe button, especially if you like the Typhoon H because you're going to see more of it coming. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.